What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. This is a series on YouTube that I do every Friday where I give you five pieces of information relating to fitness. In today's episode I'm going to give you five ways to help improve your gym performance so you can kick more ass while you're at the gym. So, as always, intro, let's get into it. Number one warm up correctly. Now the vast majority of us either skip this part or if we do do it we spend five minutes jogging on a treadmill and then we do a couple of warm up sets and if you're doing that it's not going to cut it anymore. Think of your muscles like blue tack. Weird analogy I know but bear with me. When you get blue tack and it's cold and you try and stretch it what happens? It snaps relatively quickly. Spend five minutes rolling it around in your hands warming it up and then stretch it. What happens then? It stretches. And our muscles work in the exact same way. Before a workout, they are cold, they are tight, and they are not very mobile. And the idea of a warm up is to get your heart rate up, oxygenized blood pumped around to the body, into the muscles that we need, and this will do one very important thing. It'll warm your muscles up so when you go to perform these exercises, there's less chance of injury, less chance of any muscles snapping or straining or you dropping a bar on your face when you're benching because your pecs given out. So at the beginning of every workout, just spend 10, 15 minutes just getting your heart rate up, stretching and making your body mobile for the exercises that you're about to perform. Number two, keep it compound. Are you incorporating lifts like deadlift, bench, squat and overhead press into your workout? Because if not, I would do it like now in today's workout. After you watch this video, go to the gym and start your workout off with one of these exercises. The reason for this is because unlike isolation exercises, a compound movement involves two to three, even up to four muscle groups to be involved at the same time, as opposed to an isolated muscle, one muscle that you get from an isolation movement. An example of this would be the bench press versus a pec deck. The bench press being your compound movement will not only involve your chest, but it will also involve your triceps on the pushing movement up, it will involve your shoulders, and it will also involve your abs as your stabilizer muscles. Now in terms of the pec deck, your isolation movement, you're typically seated on a machine, and that machine will take pressure off everything else other than the target muscle it's trying to isolate which would be your pecs. Incorporate some compound movements into your workout routine as well. Not only will you gain strength, but you'll burn a lot more calories due to a lot more muscles being activated at the same time. And then once you've done one or two compound movements, then move on to your isolation work. Number three, increase your water intake. I must sound like a broken record talking about water intake. Let me say it like this. Your muscles are made up of between 70 to 79% water and our body gets energy to fuel our workouts from glycogen that comes from carbohydrates and other sources. Now in order for this glycogen to be effective, one gram of glycogen bonds with three to four grams of water and that's stored in your muscle, giving you energy for your workouts. So if you then decrease your water intake, there's less water in your muscles, therefore less water for this glycogen to bond to, therefore less energy for your workouts. Now if you haven't got enough energy to fuel your workouts, you're not going to be able to lift the weight that your body can lift. You'll be going with what you can do on that day. In turn, burning less calories and promoting less protein synthesis muscle growth. So I will say it until I'm blue in the face, but get your water in two to three liters a day. Number four, stay consistent. Now I'm not talking about staying consistent and going to the gym, you should already be doing that. I'm talking about staying consistent with the lifts you do at the gym, to an extent. One big mistake that I've noticed most in people at the gym is that they come in and do a completely different workout from what they did last week. But I know what you're thinking. Look, Connor, isn't it good to change up your routine every week so your body doesn't get adjust to the movements you're doing? Yes. And no is the answer to that question. Now yes, it is good to change up your routine every week so you personally do not get bored from your routine. Because the last thing you want to be doing is going to the gym and hating what you do. But in terms of confusing your muscle and 
mixing it up every week. Well, you can get that from introducing progressive overload into your workout. Progressive overload is basically adding extra weight or extra reps onto a certain exercise that you do every single week. So every single week, you can add more weight and more reps in turn getting stronger. Now that will confuse your muscles just as much as mixing your routine up every week. But you stay consistent with your lifts. You start to notice that you're getting stronger. Whereas if you go into the gym and you do five random exercises each week, but how do you know if you've improved? Because you're doing five different exercises. So the way that I structure my workouts is every push day, for example, chest and triceps. I come in and I start with a flat barbell bench press and then I go into an incline barbell bench press. Now in November, I started off my bench press with 70 kilos for four sets of eight reps. It's now May and I'm doing 82.5 kilos and I've got four sets of eight. So my next bench workout, I'm going to take it up to 85. So pick a few movements that you like doing and do them every single week or every single workout, but just increase the amount of weight, the amount of sets, the amount of reps you're doing each set, and then move on to three or four different isolation exercises or some other compound movements that you didn't do last week to, to spice it up and make it fun for you but make sure that you are tracking your progression. And finally, number five, go in with a plan. This may sound like the most simplest tip that I can give you. You have no idea how many people don't do it, but how useful it actually is just to spend an extra five or 10 minutes every single day writing your workout down before you go in there so you know, know what you're going in there to do. I've done this many times. There's no worse feeling than getting into a gym with no clue of what I'm going to do and then having a crappy workout. I find just visually having what I'm doing down in front of me is not only easier to get to every machine, plow through this workout and get in there, in and out as quick as possible, but it also allows you to plan ahead for if a machine is taken, you can choose an alternative, but it also just keeps you a bit organised and keeps you stress free when you're in the gym, because the last thing you want to do is halfway through a workout is stressing about what exercises you're going to do next and what's going to be free and what's not. Just go in there with a little piece of paper with your exercises written down so you know exactly what you're going to do. It's simple but it's effective and it's the small things that make the biggest difference when it comes to training. So get on it, get yourself organised, get planned. Another week, another video and another five reason another week, another video, and another five tips I've given you guys to help you on your fitness journey. Don't know what that was about, magic rainbow. But anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any reasons of your own that could help anyone else or that I may have missed, there's a comment section below for that reason. But most importantly, I will see you next Friday for another five Fridays.